Morning, church. Won't you stand? Let's sing as we gather this morning. This is the day. This is the day that you have made. Whatever comes, I won't complain. For all my hope. Is in your name, and now your joy awaits my praise. I give thanks for all you have done, and I will sing of your mercy and your love. Your love is unfailing, Lord. I am When I was down, you brought me out and set my feet on higher ground. So here I am, you are my God, your faithfulness, my solid rock. I give thanks for all you have done, and I will see. Your mercy and your love, your love is unfailing, Lord, I am grateful. I give thanks for all you have done. I won't forget all the battles you have won. Your love is unfailing, Lord, I am grateful. As we lift our hands, the heavens open, heavens open. So let our lives declare the love our God has spoken over us. And as we lift our hands, the heavens open. 
Lift your hearts with me. Father, thank you for your unfailing love, never stopping, never giving up. God, you meet us where we are this morning. You've gathered us in this place. And by the name of Jesus, we are a new creation. God, thank you for the faith that you give us that we can give back to you and what we do and how we love each other. I pray that as we continue our time together in worship, Lord, that you'd be glorified in us, that you would make us one as you are. We ask and pray these things through your Holy Spirit and all the church said. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Well, good morning. Welcome to Northside Community Church. My name's Adrian Dixon. I serve as the pastor here at Northside. We're very honored that you'd be here today with us. And if you are our guest today, we certainly want to extend a very special welcome to you and let you know we're thankful that you're here. Uh, and the seat in front of you is what we would call a connect card. If you're okay sharing some information with us, we'd love to know a little bit about you. Or if you have a prayer concern, we'd love to be knowing how we could be praying for you. You can use either that card to share uh, your information with us or your prayer request with us and drop it in the offering box as you leave today. It's a special day here at Northside. We're going to talk a little bit later on what Chester Joash Sunday is here at Northside, but to let you know that you're here for a very special day, and we're glad that you're here. If you got a bulletin this morning, there's a couple of things to share with you. Really, three big things as we head into this week. The first is read and feed. That is going to be starting this Wednesday night. That is an opportunity to come alongside students at Nightdale Elementary, particularly students that have been identified as being at risk in their literacy skills. And they come here, they get a hot meal, and they practice their reading to mentors. And so if that is an opportunity that you're looking and, and think, man, I could really be involved with this, Deb Stone is going to be your point of contact. Her email's in the bulletin. Drop her a note, let her know you'd like some more information on read and feed. Then Saturday, we've got our block party coming up, hoping the weather's going to be just like it is right now. But come out and join us for that. From 11 to 2, this place is, is going to look a lot different. There's going to be inflatables, rock walls, candy, burgers, hot dogs. Everything's free. It's a great opportunity to reach out and invite your friends and neighbors to come and, and really just try and get people in this community knowing one another a little bit better. And then the last thing to share with you is that we've got a work day coming up. And this is going to be a joint work day between Northside and the Compassion Project. And so there is a sign up in the lobby at the kiosk. We'd love to have as many people as possible. We're going to direct about five people towards the Compassion Project to do some work, and the rest of us are going to stay here at Northside and do work. But if you could free up some time from 8 to 12 and a couple of Saturdays, we would love to have you come out. Really thankful that you're here this morning. I appreciate Eric opening us in prayer. So why don't we take a moment, if you hadn't had a chance to greet somebody, let them know you're glad they're here, and then our worship team will call us back together in a few moments. But thank you so much for being here this morning.
The Old Testament reading today comes from Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Yes, give praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever. Everywhere, from east to west, praise the name of the Lord. For the Lord is high above the nations. His glory is higher than the heavens. Who can be compared with the Lord our God, who is enthroned on high? He stoops to look down on heaven and on earth. He lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dump. He sets them among princes, even the princes of his own people. He gives the childless woman a family, making her a happy mother. Praise the Lord, the word of God for us, the people of God. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you've chosen me. Love has called my name. Yeah, I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. A child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God You split the sea so I could walk Time to clear it this morning. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Shine. 
the story to his disciples. There was a certain rich man who had a manager handling his affairs. One day a report came that the manager was wasting his employer's money. So the employer called him in and said, what's this I hear about you? Get your report in order because you are going to be fired. The manager thought to himself, now what? My boss has fired me. I don't have the strength to dig ditches and I'm too proud to beg. I know how to ensure that I'll have plenty of friends who will give me a home when I'm fired. So he invited each person who owed money to his employer to come and discuss the situation. He asked the first one, how much do you owe him? The man replied, I owe him 800 gallons of olive oil. So the manager told him, take the bill and quickly change it to 400 gallons. And how much do you owe my employer? He asked the next man. I owe him 1,000 bushels of wheat was the reply. Here the manager said, take the bill and change it to 800 bushels. The rich man had to admire the dishonest rascal for being so shrewd. And it is true that the children of this world are more shrewd in dealing with the world around them than are the children of the light. Here's the lesson. Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Then when your possessions are gone, they will welcome you to an internal home. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, 
Who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. The word of God for us, the people of God. Let's respond to God's word together in singing this worthy of every song. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every song we live for you. Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There's none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Let's sing Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, You're worthy, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you, oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. And I will build my life upon you. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. And I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. I will build my Upon your love, it is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. your heart and lead me in your love to those around me and I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will put my trust 
prayer this morning is that you would give us your heart that you would give us your vision for this world that you give us your vision for this people for our neighbors that you would help us see ourselves as you see us that we know that you give us the foundation of love through your spirit at work within us and all the anxieties around us. You tell us to seek your kingdom first. So as we hear the birds sing this morning, as we look around us and see the beauty of creation and how you care for it, as we look into each other's eyes, as we greet one another, may we be reminded that you are holding all things together. And your time is perfect, always. May we never miss an opportunity to extend your love to each other, that the world may see it, may see your goodness at work within us, and give you glory for it, that they may also know you, know your healing, may know your rescue, may know your salvation. God, you're faithful to do what we cannot always. For those that are hurting this morning, I pray that they would know your life. And I pray that they would know your peace. And they would know your joy. Even in the midst of sorrow and death. Well, for those that are hurting in dangerous places that are gathered together this morning on your day, the day of resurrection. May they know your hope that is within them. And may we never forget, God, who we are in you. We'll declare it together this morning, church. Let's sing that line together. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. And I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken, and I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation, and I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. God, help us not to be afraid. We ask and pray these things in the name of Jesus through your Holy Spirit. And all the church said, Amen. I invite you to be seated. We're going to be in 1 Chronicles 29 this morning. We're going to be looking at verses 10 through 18. So I'd invite you to find 1 Chronicles. We don't spend a lot of time there, so we may give you an extra little bit of time to, to try and find 1 Chronicles this morning. And as we do, I'm going to invite Melissa Brown to come and, and to read this passage of Scripture for us. And as Melissa reads this for us, would would invite you to, to hear the words that, 
that David is saying. And if you're, if you're paying attention, you may even hear some words that are used by Jesus Christ himself in the New Testament as he's lifting his prayer to his Father. So, Melissa. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things, and your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give thanks to you and praise your glorious name. But who am I? And who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. We are foreigners and strangers in your sight, as, we are all, as were all our ancestors. Our days on earth are like a shadow without hope. Lord our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building your temple, for you a temple for your holy name, comes from your hand, and all of it belongs to you. I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. All these things I have given willingly and with honest intent. And now I have seen the joy, how willingly your people who are here have given to you. Lord, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, keep these desires and thoughts in the hearts of your people forever and keep their hearts loyal to you. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, to God. be to God. Thanks, Melissa. So if you've been with us this month, you know that we've been talking about a word. That word is generous. And if you are new to Northside, then one of the things that's important for you to know is that we take time each year to talk about giving. And we've been taking the month of September to talk about giving. And, and over the last four weeks, we've really moved away from even that word giving to this word generous. We've talked about what it means to be generous with our heart, generous with our time, generous with our talent, that it's more than just this, this momentary incident that happens in our life where we go and we put something in an offering box, but it really is a way of life. It's how, how you and I have been called to live. We've talked about how the early church was known for its generosity, how individuals were giving and, and not leaving people behind when wars and famines would come, and, and how many people who were considered pagans at the time began looking at, at these early Christians and noticing that there was this love that they possessed that they had never experienced before in their lives. And as we have for the last 16 years, our, our month-long focus on giving culminates on a day like today with what we call Chest of Joash Sunday. This is an opportunity for, for those that consider Northside to be their home to, to bring a sacrificial gift that is going to be used for, for our building fund. Over the last several years, people have given not knowing exactly what the future was going to hold for Northside in terms of where we would be or what was going to be next. And last year, many of us came together knowing that the Children's Center was on the horizon and, and committed a, made a two-year commitment to this Let Them Come campaign. And you guys have been so faithful through that this year. And thinking about what, what to share today, I, I'm going to be honest with you that my heart this week has, has struggled to find exactly the words to, to relay this morning. My heart was drawn to, to First Chronicles, and I don't know if you've ever been drawn to a thought, but not really had an idea of, of what that thought means, other than you, you know this is where you're supposed to be or know what you're supposed to say, but in terms of making sense of it, it it's, it's something that can be very hard to do. And so even late last night, I was sitting down and trying to, to fine-tune what to share with you this morning, and I was drawing a blank. And so what I, I thought we would do is, is maybe something a little bit different. And, and what's interesting about this is that I, I'm not a big believer in coincidence. And, and so just seeing some of the things that have happened this past week that line up with the Scripture passage, in my mind, speaks a message in and of itself. To fully appreciate this passage of Scripture that Melissa read for us, you have to understand the history that we're talking about here. 
We've talked about Joash before, and I've used the illustration, and, and this is the chest we're going to use this morning. Joash recognized that there was a repair that the temple needed. And so the Bible says that he took a chest and he, he bore a hole in the lid of the chest. And you have to appreciate that at that time, the temple was the rallying point, similar to what NC State might be to you or, or what this town might be to you, similar to the things that bring people together. The temple brought people together. And as the temple went, so went the people. I mean, the, te- the people were instrumental in building the temple. They were instrumental in following where the temple was going, where the tabernacle was being taken at the time. And the Bible tells us that the temple was in disrepair. And so Joash takes this chest and he bore a hole in its lid. And the Bible says that he, he places it on the right side as you entered the altar. So that would be like placing it right there at the door as you would walk in this morning as this constant reminder of, of the sacrifice that it was going to require to repair the temple. The Bible says that it took 23 years Could you imagine a 23-year campaign on giving? I can't. I can't imagine keeping that message in front of people for 23 years. And the Bible says that the temple was restored. And to to appreciate what Joash was experiencing, you, you have to go back to the passage that Melissa read for us. David is nearing the end of his life. He's reigned in Jerusalem and over Israel for a period of 40 years, and he's given his goodbye messages. And David, if, you, if you've read about his life, one of his passions was that he so desperately wanted to see the temple built. He wanted to be a part of building the temple. And the Bible tells us that God kept him from doing that. I don't know if you remember this. God kept him from doing that because David had blood on his hands. David had committed sin with Bathsheba, and in order to try and cover that up, he sent Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, to the front lines to be killed in battle so that he could come alongside as as a consoler and marry this woman who he had an affair with. Nathan the prophet comes to him and says, you're not getting away with that. And God says, you're not going to build the temple. So David spends the last few years of his life gathering all of these resources, calling on the people to come and and, and to build this temple. And he gives this goodbye speech. He's getting ready to pass away. He's at the end of his life. He stands before the people and he talks about how wonderful God is, how merciful God is, how good God is. And he has nothing but thanks for God and nothing but thanks for the people of Israel for knowing that they were right on the cusp of getting ready to see the temple built. I read the story of Joash 120 years later after the passage that Melissa read for us. 120 years passed since the temple was constructed and Joash comes along as king and recognizes that it needs to be rebuilt and, and fixed up. And in my mind, it mirrors so much of what we've experienced here except in a, in a different way. We arrived here in 2011 to a place that was in disrepair in, in a lot of ways. And, and much like Joash, you guys stepped up and, and helped make this what this is today. Brought life back to a part of the community where life wasn't existing. Brought hope and in a presence back where the presence wasn't here for many years. And now we're getting ready to start construction on a a new children's center. It's almost like the opposite is happening from the David and Joash timeline. We got to a place and repaired it, and now we're getting ready to start something new. I read this story, and and I I think about what does it mean to be joyful in the midst of, of being generous? What does it mean to be right on the cusp of something? And to be able to stand with thanksgiving, not begging and pleading and hoping that it's going to work out, but standing with confidence that this is going to happen. Because church, that's where we are this morning. Let's read this again. David praised the Lord in the presence of his whole assembly, meaning David had gathered all the people. The people knew that the king was dying. They knew that he was in the the last throes of life. And so the crowds have gathered to hear this farewell speech. If you were going to leave a farewell speech with someone, if you were going to bid them words goodbye, 
What would it be? What, what would you offer them? These are David's words. These are his words. He says, praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel. From everlasting to everlasting, yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. It was almost like David was trying to think of words that would adequately describe his experience with God. God, everything that I have seen in life, all the glory is yours. All the splendor is yours. All the majesty is yours. It is all yours. What is David doing in this passage of Scripture? I think he's recognizing God for who he is. I think he's recognizing God is, is not only the giver of things, and we're going to get to that. I think he's recognizing God as, as it, as the only thing. And that everything that you and I look upon, everything that we could possibly fix our eyes upon, is, is attributable and owing to God. He says, yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Those are pretty powerful words coming from the king. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. And then he pauses and he says, now, our God, we give you thanks. David wasn't giving thanks for the, the temple that had been built. David was giving thanks for what God had done for him and also for what was coming. And we praise your glorious name. And you can imagine this transition in this passage of Scripture where David is, is laying out these praises and all of a sudden he pivots and he starts to get a little personal in this passage of Scripture. He says, but who am I? And, and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? What is he saying in this passage? He's recognizing that the people have stepped up and, and they are right on the cusp of getting ready to start this journey. And he's, he's asking this rhetorical question of the congregation there. He's asking, who are they in the sight of God? Who are they in the sight of others that they would be able to step up and, and give the way that they have given? And here's his answer. Everything comes from you. And we have given you only what comes from your hand. What is God reminding David of? And what is David reminding us of? Ultimately, generosity doesn't come from us. Ultimately, generosity comes from God. We talk about being generous with our time. We talk about being generous with our talents. We talk about being generous with our resources. David is saying the ability to be generous the ability to show generosity has been manifested upon us by God himself because of his generosity to us. It's David saying that because of God, we are able to be generous. Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. We are foreigners and strangers in your sight, as were all our ancestors. Our days on earth are like a shadow without hope. Lord our God, all this abundance that we have provided for a building you a temple for your holy name comes from your hand, and all of it belongs to you. That, guys, if we miss that, if we miss this in life, we, we miss seeing who God truly is. I get up and go to work every single day, and I, I work for a great company. I, I feel like I have a great job and at times I get home and I, I'm tempted to look at things that I want, tempted to think about things I want, and tempted to conclude that because of, of what I do in life and because of the job that I have in life, those things should be a natural byproduct of a working life. Those things should, should just come with the territory. And here you have a king who is trying to make the connection for his people that all of it, every bit of it, comes from God. The ability to work, the ability to have wealth, the ability to give, it's not rooted in, in what you and I get in life. It's rooted in what we have already been given in life. It's a very similar message to what Jesus was talking about in the New Testament when he talks about what it means to be stewards, what it means to be managers, not owners, not proprietors, not people who have created our own way, but people who have been given a way. David recognized this early on. 
He talks about the, the, the recognition of what has been given to him. He says this in verse 17, I, I know, my God, that you test the heart and you're pleased with integrity. All these things I've given willingly and, and with honest intent. And then he says this, and now I have seen with joy how willingly your people who are here have given to you. Lord, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, what is he reminding them? That God is the same God yesterday, today, and he's going to be the God of forever. Listen to what he says. Keep these desires and the thoughts and the hearts of your people forever and keep their hearts loyal to you. And give my son Solomon, we, we stopped at 18, but this is his prayer. And give my son Solomon the wholehearted devotion to keep your commands, statutes and decrees, and to do everything to build the palatial structure for which I have provided. And he finishes with this in verse 20. Then David said to the whole assembly, praise the Lord your God. So they all praised the Lord, the God of their fathers. They bowed down, prostrating themselves before the Lord and King. Try to visualize that for a moment. David has gathered these people. He's, he's nearing the, the end of his life, and he's, he's got them together, and he's giving God thanks for the generosity of the people, and at the same time, wrapping in this message as almost a reminder that ultimately generosity comes from God. As thankful as he was for the people, you, you hear David's heart that his thankfulness was for the Lord and how the people responded to that. And he says something that has been a prayer of mine for us as a congregation for years. He, he prays, God, let these people be loyal to you. One of the things that I pray for our congregation is that God would never take his Holy Spirit from us. Because I think David recognized, and, and I, I certainly recognize, that the, the moment that our fidelity to God or his presence with us is no longer the norm, is no longer the way, we will lose sight. We will lose sight of things. We will lose sight of God. We will lose sight of what is important and what God has called us to do. David is, is standing on the cusp, and I was thinking a couple of nights ago in reading this passage, how, how difficult it must have been for him to be able to, to look and to see this thing that, that he so desperately wanted to happen that he wasn't going to live to experience. And I, I, I connect that to different things in my life, different things that, that I would have loved to have seen happen and, and didn't get to see happen. And I, I can't help but think that this was David's greatest passion in life. And yet he approaches his last hurrah with the people with thanks, not regret, not, not saying it wasn't fair, not getting up and saying, look at everything that I've done for you guys and I'm not going to get to live to see it. But he goes out giving thanks. We as a church family have had an opportunity over the last 18 years to stand as testimonies to God's gratefulness in our lives and over this past year especially as we get closer and closer to to extending the temple that's here where God's presence is with us I am so thankful for you guys I feel like sometimes as a, a, a pastor I, I, I can be a little heavy-handed with with the gospel and a little heavy-handed with the word but I want you to hear this morning how thankful I am for you how grateful I am to be on this journey with you and, and how much hope I have for the church today. Because if you follow the news, if you follow media, the church, the church has a lot of critics. It has a lot of people who are critical of it. And, and yet, we have been called the bride of Christ. And you and I are, are, are in this together. As we approach this chest to Joash Sunday. I think I was given a, a glimpse of things last night. Uh, our, our oldest member at Northside is, is even right now on her way to being with Jesus. And it's, it's Eric and I's grandmother, Maddie. And 
over the last couple of days, she's been calling family. And then last night, we, it was getting very close. And, and she kept telling us, I'm, I'm going to miss you so much. I'm going to miss you. And I love you. And I, I couldn't help but be drawn to the very words of David, speaking something very similar to his people. That as much as he wanted to stay, his hope and, and his, his joy was, was not found in getting to see things happen. His hope and his joy was found in how good God had been to him and how good the people had been and their response to God. I, I think of that and I, I think of, of being able to get to that place in your life where you can be generous. Because generous people approach not only the end of their life, generous people approach just about everything with thanksgiving in their heart. Thanksgiving for what they've been given. Thanksgiving for who they have. Thanksgiving for the blessing of life. Thanksgiving for the talents that God has given them. They look at everything through the lens of thanksgiving. And you need to know, church, this morning that I'm thankful for you. As we approach this time, if you're new to Northside, I, I hope, as we've been talking about the last couple of weeks, I hope that you won't feel compelled to participate. If you did come ready to participate this morning, my, my hope is that as you approach the altar with whatever you're bringing, my hope is that you'll feel a sense of generosity in your life and thanksgiving in your life and joy in your life for what God is doing here and the opportunity that you and I have to be a part of it. I'm going to ask you to pray with me. Lord, so often in life we find reasons to not be grateful. We, we find reasons to come up with I ideas of, of what we think is right and, and what we think is, is owed to us. And Lord, if we're not careful, that has a way of shaping our heart. Lord, I thank you that you give us examples in Scripture of, of people who modeled thanksgiving in their life. I'm grateful that, that you give us examples of, of individuals who didn't necessarily get to live to see everything that they wanted or didn't get to do everything that they had hoped. But Lord, they, they still approach their life with a spirit of thanksgiving for who you are. Lord, that is such a needed example in our times and a, a time and place where we feel entitled to things and a time and place where if we want something, we, we find a way to make it happen or to get it. Lord, I pray if, if only for this moment that we would just stop and be grateful for what we have. And be grateful for what we have seen. Be grateful for who we have in our lives. Be grateful for this place. Be grateful for what you're doing here. Lord, grateful in, in such a way that that becomes part of the fabric of who we are, that, that how we live our lives, how we show up in this world is, is through a life of generosity. Not because we have so much to give, but because so much has been given to us. Lord, like David, may we, may we recognize that it all comes from you. It is all yours to begin with. Lord, in that, what we're bringing today really isn't ours, Father, it's yours. Lord, I, I thank you for the hearts that are behind the gifts. Not, not just the monetary gifts, Lord, but the, the hearts that are behind the gifts of, of serving. Serving in children's ministry, serving in student ministry, serving in welcoming people, serving on the worship team, serving behind the scenes, Lord, serving by opening up homes. Lord, I, I thank you for the ways that we serve you and the hearts that are behind it. Lord, in all things, Father, we ask you to keep us close to you. 
Father, to not let us stray, to not leave us on our own, to not give us over to the, the things that we think are right. But Lord, that your Holy Spirit would always go before us, that your Holy Spirit would continue to lead us and guide us and direct us, not only as a congregation, but Father, as an individual, as a follower of you. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you for life. And we ask all of these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. What I'd like to do is, is invite our worship team to come up. And I'm going to place this chest right up here at the altar. And this morning, if you would like to participate, you are certainly welcome to. And whether you choose to participate or not, I hope all of us will participate in responding in worship, responding in singing. And as the Lord leads you this morning, certainly would invite you to respond as, as God leads you. Would you stand and, and we'll sing together. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my morning. morning. Thank you so much for joining us for worship this morning. If you've been with us for the last couple weeks, you know that we've been talking a lot about generosity, and it culminates today with Chester Joe Ash Sunday. And right now, people who consider Northside their church home are dropping off their, their sacrificial gifts for the, the construction of our children's ministry center. And we're so thankful for our online community that tunes in every week. And I want to give you an opportunity to participate if you'd like. There's going to be some instructions popping up on your screen. And if you feel led to participate, we'd love to have your support. More than anything, please know that we're grateful for you and your faithfulness for tuning in for us. Stay tuned. We're going to be joining the service back here in a little bit. And have a great week. Let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee. Take my silver in my gold. Not a mind would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as you choose. Here am I.
my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. All right. In the spirit of, of talking about being thankful, as a response to God's Word this morning, I hope that maybe rather than just rushing out or heading to the bathroom or going to get another cup of coffee, why not take a moment and express your thankfulness to one another before you step out of here this morning? Give somebody a hug, kiss them on the cheek, let them know you're thankful for them, and receive this benediction from 2 Corinthians 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss, or a modern-day translation, give one another an Eric kind of hug. <laughs> All of God's people here send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Have a great week, everyone. Good morning, let's stand and sing together. Praise Him, O you sinners. Sing, O sing, you weary. Oh, praise Him, O you children of God. As we lift high His glory, we show. Our great Redeemer, glorious Savior, your name is higher than the rising sun. Light of the morning, you shine forever, your name is higher than the rising sun. Your name is higher than the rising sun. Praise his name forever. Praise.